For a while, I was struggling with sleep, which was then affecting my ability to think clearly and perform my daily work. I was also getting trembles and even anxiety just from the lack of sleep. I also couldn't do normal daily tasks like grocery shopping or do multiple errands, not to mention the migraines from only two to three hours a night of sleep. It was taking a toll on me and I even considered sleeping medication. I was already a consumer of Ned's original CBD, but then they came out with their sleep blend. So I decided to give that a try. Ned's sleep blend contains not only CBD, but also CBN, which has shown in studies to specifically help sleep. Other organic botanicals shown to help sleep are also added, such as lemon balm and passion flower. All these ingredients work cohesively, creating the perfect blend to help anyone struggling with sleep, including myself. I just take a full dropper under my tongue 30 minutes before I want to go to bed for a restful night's sleep. This is organic certified, outdoor grown, and made in small batches. Ned believes in full transparency and happily shares third-party lab reports right on their website. That's just another reason why I love Ned CBD. I personally consume it and even recommend it to my family. Become the best version of yourself and get 15% off Ned products with code DIGEST. Go to helloned.com slash digest or enter code DIGEST at checkout. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D dot com slash digest to get 15% off. Thank you, Ned, for sponsoring the show and offering my listeners a natural remedy for some of life's most common health issues. It's time for today's Bite of Knowledge. Each country has its own standards for what ingredients and food production practices it considers safe. And some of what's considered normal practice for the food industry in the United States is handled very differently in other countries. And it's pretty well known that rates of chronic disease like cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and obesity are very high in the U.S., In our country's residents are also experiencing more food allergies and behavioral disorders than ever. In many cases, these conditions and diseases are highly preventable. It turns out that there are a number of ingredients and food additives that other countries have banned, but the U.S. still uses them. So before I list the names banned in the U.S., I want to explain a little bit how the U.S. government works and how these ingredients are even slipped in. For starters, the FDA states that food companies can market new chemicals and food additives without FDA oversight or approval, so long as, I quote, the substance is generally recognized among qualified experts as having been adequately shown to be safe, end quote. This is known as the GRAS system, G-R-A-S. So first of all, my question is what makes someone a qualified expert and how are they able to determine which chemicals food companies can add to the food we feed ourselves and our children? It turns out that these companies often convene their own expert panels to decide whether the ingredient will pose harm. And many of these panels contain scientists with financial ties to all manner of industries, even including the tobacco industry. Based on the panel's recommendations, companies then decide whether or not to share the result of the assessment with the FDA. So they don't even have to do so. Also, most of the chemicals on the GRASS list have never had long-term testing on humans and therefore can't possibly be guaranteed safe. Some of them don't stand up to the test of time either. So for example, BHA is generally recognized as safe, despite the fact that the National Institutes of Health's National Toxicology Program concluded that BHA can be reasonably anticipated to be a human carcinogen. And that was a quote. And then there are artificial trans fats, which have historically been on the grass list and added to foods like frozen pizza, peanut butter, packaged snack foods, vegetable shortenings, and ready to use frostings to improve their flavor, texture, and shelf life. 
Unfortunately, we later learned that trans fats were causing upwards of 500,000 deaths per year associated with heart disease. So in 2015, the FDA finally decided that trans fats or partially hydrogenated oils were unsafe, giving food manufacturers a few years to remove them from the food supply. Since the ban took place, many food companies have replaced trans fats with ingredients like palm oil instead, which comes with its own set of concerns. Now let's talk about the eight banned ingredients that are still widely used in the U.S., Number one, dough conditioners. Dough conditioners such as potassium bromate, and I can't even pronounce this other one, so excuse me. It's azodia carbon, carbonamide. <laughs> so these are chemicals used to improve the strength and texture of bread dough. Dough conditioners are often found in white breads and rolls. However, they are possible human carcinogens. For example, potassium bromate is classified as a category 2B carcinogen. Exposure to these dough conditioners are known to cause respiratory sensitivity, such as asthma or other breathing difficulties. And potassium bromate is banned in China, India, Brazil, and the European Union, also Canada. And that other chemical that I can't even pronounce is banned in Australia and Europe. Banned ingredient number two, Brominated vegetable oil, or BVO. So, fun fact. Brominated vegetable oil was originally patented by chemical companies as a flame retardant. Hmm, fun. (laughs) But now, BVO can be found in certain colorful sports drinks and citrus-flavored sodas as an emulsifier. Studies have even shown that BVO isn't harmless, but it actually accumulates in human tissue as well as breast milk, and can cause memory loss over time. So I'm not sure why these studies say it's harmless if also studies have shown that it accumulates in human tissue and can cause memory loss over time. This toxicity can lead to, in addition, skin rashes, appetite loss, and heart problems, as well as major organ damage and birth defects. And these are all just studies um, that I have seen and they're they're linked back to. BVO also competes with iodine for receptor sites in the body, which can increase risk for iodine deficiency, autoimmune disease, and even certain cancers. It has been banned in other countries, but it's been used in food and beverages in America since 1977 when it was originally approved by the FDA. Number three, propylparaben. So in the United States, propylparaben is used as a preservative in tortillas, muffins, trail mix pies, sausage rolls, and so much more. Research has found that it can affect sex hormones and sperm counts in young rats. Cornell University research had also indicated that exposure to parabens may be linked to breast cancer. This additive is completely legal in the U.S., but In 2006, the European Food Safety Authority banned it in food. And in 2015, they went even further, also banning it from cosmetics. Number four, BHA and BHT. So both of these are popular man-made antioxidants used in dry mixes, cereals, and dehydrated potato products to preserve them and increase shelf life. They're also found in product packaging. Yes, the packaging alone. These are possible carcinogens and endocrine disruptors, meaning that they can alter the normal function of your hormones and lead to disease. BHA and BHT are banned for use in food and beverages by the United Kingdom, European Union, Japan, as well as other countries. But let me read you this, and I quote, BHA is considered by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to be generally recognized as safe, end quote. Banned ingredient number five, synthetic food dyes. So it's no secret that food manufacturers use synthetic food dyes such as blue number two, yellow number five, and red number 40 to enhance the coloring of certain foods and ingredients to make them more appealing to consumers. I don't need to tell you that Countless beverages, candy, and even baked goods commonly contain these food dyes. 
These dyes are even used in unnecessary ways like making mustard more yellow, salmon more pink, and it's even in jarred pickles to make the color more pleasing to the eye of the shopper. Research has linked consumption of synthetic dyes to an increased risk of numerous conditions like tumors and hyperactivity in children. It's interesting that the same product in the USA contains different ingredients than that of ones sold in other countries. For example, in like, let's just take the the Fanta, do you know, remember those Fanta drinks? Fanta contains actual fruit juice and is dyed naturally in most parts of the world. But Americans enjoy Fanta colored with petroleum derived artificial dyes like red number 40 and yellow number six. Banned ingredient number six, GMOs. So with most US soy, sugar beets, corn, canola, cotton, alfalfa, they're all being GMO crops. Many European countries have banned or at least regulated them due to public safety concerns. One common genetic manipulation involves altering DNA in certain crops to make them resistant to herbicides. One of the most common herbicides used in conjunction with these GMOs is glyphosate, which is the primary active ingredient in the weed killer Roundup. By now, I hope we all are aware that glyphosate consumption has been linked to cancer, among other health issues. As of June 2019, they... There were bans or at least major restrictions on the use of glyphosate in Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Colombia, Denmark, El Salvador, France, Germany, Greece, India, Italy. I mean, I literally could go on, but it's still legal in the USA. Could this be our healthcare system? And could it be that It's just so intertwined that they actually want us to continue getting sick so that we spend more money trying to get better. That's just an opinion, but good food for thought. Banned ingredient number seven, herbicides, insecticides, and fungicides. So all of these are widely used on crops in the US. The reason is just to keep them free of bugs and diseases. Meanwhile, other countries see the danger that they pose to humans. There are over 300 active ingredients authorized for agricultural use in the U.S. These are just another reason why buying organic means so much to me. Number eight is Alestra. So Alestra or Olean is a cholesterol-free fat substitute. The FDA approved it for use in foods in the 90s, and it's still used in certain potato chips and french fries. But Olestra may cause extremely unpleasant digestive reactions like diarrhea and leaky bowels. Consuming a lot of it can also lead to deficiencies in fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, K, as well as carotenoids. Both Canada and the United Kingdom have banned the ingredient. So if you're living in the U.S. and wondering what we can do about this, well, I mean, we can't control what food companies put in their products, uh, but we don't have to eat them. So just a few tips that you can do to make sure the food you eat is as safe as possible. Um, obviously, first, first of all, read the food labels carefully. Eat minimally processed or even better whole organic foods as much as possible. Cook at home, that's another great thing you can do. This way you have more control over the food you're eating. And educate others. If you're listening to this, you now have a lot of good information at your fingertips and now you can educate, share this podcast, share this episode with your friends and family, share it for your loved ones, for their own health. And hopefully they'll be inspired to really make the shift and they'll see an improvement in their own health. So that is today's Bite of Knowledge. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digest This. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review in your podcast app to let us know. If you're ever wondering how you can support me and this podcast, sharing it with your friends and family is the best way. This is a Resonant Media production produced by Drake Peterson and edited by Chris McComb. To email the show, message us at digestthispod at gmail.com. 
See you next time. The content of this show is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not a substitute for individual medical and mental health advice and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. As always, talk to your doctor or health team first.